All right, let's talk about how to account for investments in other companies. Uh, so when your corporation buys the common stock of another corporation, you have an investment in equity security. Their account, the cost of that includes the price of the security plus the broker commission and any, any fees related to the purchase. Um, now, this is an important concept here. Unlike bonds here, when you own stock of another corporation, you exert control proportional to your, your ownership. So the, the degree to which the investor acquires an interest in the common stock of another corporation, the investee, that will determine the accounting treatment subsequent to acquisition. So if you have between you know, 0 and 20% ownership, generally speaking, you do not have significant influence over the, that corporation. In that case, we're going to account for your investment using the fair value method, which we'll get into later. But uh, just generally, I want you guys to see this, this outline here. Let's go to the extreme on the right here. When you have between 50 and 100% of that corporation stock, you have control, right? If you have 50.01%, I mean, you, you know, no one else really needs to vote. Whatever you say will, will go on the board, right? You, you have that, that control. In that case, um, the investment is valued on the, you're the parent company in that case, and the other company is the subsidiary. The investment is generally accounted for uh, with, with consolidation, you know, consolidated financial statements. We won't cover that. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, you own the other company, essentially, or a certain percentage of it. The tricky, the gray area is when you own between 20 and 50 percent of the uh, the stock of the other corporation, you usually have significant influence in that case. You don't have complete control though, but you have obviously you have a lot of say if you own 40 percent of a company's stock, for example. The FASB decided you're going to account for that using the equity method. All right which is very different than the fair value method, and we will spend some time discussing that. And here's a nice little chart. Um, you know, for equity, you can't hold to maturity, right? They don't mature. Uh, it's either available for sale or it's trading. Okay, so it's a nice little chart here. For holdings, less than 20%, okay? So for that, you have two categories. It can be available for sale or trading. Either way, we account for using the fair value method. Um, and the unrealized holding gains or losses are the same as if you had a debt security. What I mean by that is for available for sale, uh, the unrealized holding gains or losses go into other comprehensive income. If it's trading, those gains or losses are recognized in net income. So it's the same deal. Uh, other stuff that affects your income? Uh, if they pay dividends, okay, and obviously if you have a gain or loss from the sale, it's a realized gain or loss, that would obviously affect net income. But the important thing to point out that you guys may not think about is, is if they, if the company you invest in pays a dividend and, you know, you own less than 20% of it, so you're accounting for it under the fair value method, you know, you're going to get a, a dividend will be income for you, okay? Here's the deal, um, equity method accounting. This is equity method, holdings between uh, 20 and 50% equity method accounting. You won't actually recognize unrealized holding gains or losses. And you don't actually get any income from a dividend you own so much of the other company, when they pay you a dividend, it's it's almost like, you know, you give your wife some money, you share a bank account. I mean, it's, it really doesn't do anything. Uh, or, you know, it's that you own so much of the company, it's, it's very much like that. You're just taking money from your, your left pocket and putting it into your right pocket, okay? So that's not uh, income for you. What's different here with equity method is that you do get to recognize income, a proportionate share of the investee's net income. So when the company that you invested in reports net income, 
you're going to record income, uh, let's say 40% of it because you own 40% of the shares. That's what will happen. And again, we won't cover consolidation, but uh, it's the most straightforward of them all. Um, okay. So, okay, if you have less than 20%, if the market price is available subsequent to the acquisition, you can use the fair value method. Very rarely will the market price be unavailable. If it is, you use the cost method. <clears throat> okay, but that, that's pretty rare. If a stock is traded on a public exchange, the, the price is usually available. So we'll just talk about that case. All right. Uh, so let's say Republic Corporation buys some common stock of three companies here on November 3rd. Uh, each of these investments represents less than 20% interest. So we can safely assume they don't have any significant influence. And these are all available for sale. Uh, at the time we buy the investments, we debit the equity investment account for the total. And we credit cash. Easy. Let's say later on we get a cash dividend of $4,200 from Campbell Soup Company, one of our investees. Okay, so cash goes up and we have this dividend revenue from the investment. Dividend revenue, kind of a foreign concept. Usually you think of the corporation paying dividends, it's the corporation itself, but this is a dividend from another corporation to our corporation. So it's income for us. And let's say then at December 31st, end of the year, we have one of those charts again where we have the cost of everything and the fair value of everything and the difference is an unrealized gain or loss. So I guess we didn't pick stocks very well. We have overall, we have right now at least an unrealized loss of $35,550. Let's assume our previous balance on the fair value adjustment account is $0. So then we have to adjust it for to the tune of $35,550. Okay. So then at that on that date, December 31st, we have an unrealized holding gain or loss hyphen equity because it is available for sale securities we're talking about. That is why. And of course, we're going to credit the fair value adjustment account available for sale. Let's assume then that the next year in January, we're going to sell all of our Northwest Industries Incorporated Common Stock for 287,220. And let's assume, uh, okay, we have the cost here. Okay, so we sold this one above the cost. We have a gain. Okay, so cash is debited, equity investment account is credited, and the difference is the gain on sale of investments. Very easy. Again, we don't we don't adjust the available. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't adjust the fair value adjustment account right now. We will wait till the end of the year again and see what the value of the other investments have changed, and we'll we'll update the whole thing at once. Right now, we don't need to update that. And let's keep going with this Republic Corporation. Let's say later on, February 10th of 2015, they purchased 20,000 shares of Continental Trucking at 12.75 per share, plus some commissions of 18.50. So the total cost 256.850. Gosh, they gave you all that information. You really didn't need it. They, they kind of spoiled it at the end that the total cost is right there. Okay, so there is the total cost. And then, okay, fast forward then to December 31st, the fair value. Okay, this one went up in value. Good. So we're doing a better job picking stocks, it appears. We now have an unrealized gain of 64250 I see. So here's the deal. The fair value adjustment account, if you remember from the last example, let me just erase this. Sometimes this pen goes crazy. It just starts making lines like that. That's doing better now. Fair value adjustment. If you recall, it had a credit balance of 35,550. However, we would like it to have a debit balance of 64,250. 
So oh, I did it again. Let me, let me erase that because that's just too messy. Too messy. 64 250. Okay, so then what do I need to debit this for to make the balance 64 250? Well, the answer, of course, is 99,800. Okay, because I got to undo that credit plus debit it for 64 250. So in total, I better debit it for 99,800. And credit an unrealized holding gain or loss equity for 99,800. All right. Okay, that is enough for this video.